Let's take a look at how you make an undefeated fighter even better. The F-15 EX The F-15 Eagle is the embodiment of an air superiority fighter, having been in continuous service with the United States Air Force for nearly 50 years. A fighter with an unprecedented 100 plus to zero kill ratio, the F-15 was made even better by the introduction of the two-seat long-range strike fighter version known as the F-15E Strike Eagle. Today, the F-15E is the most requested asset for Middle East combat operations. The reason? Loiter or on station time. The Strike Eagle can carry as much fuel as its empty weight. To put that in context, the F-15E can carry as much fuel as the total weight of a fully fueled clean F-16. Along with this, the Strike Eagle has a Weapon System Officer or WSO or WISO, which acts as another brain and set of eyes in the cockpit. The WISO has various dedicated standardized roles, for example, during close air support missions, he or she exclusively uses the targeting pod, freeing up the pilot and minimizing the time to kill chain. Another example is when a Strike Eagle pilot is busy refueling, the WSO can receive and copy an interdiction message from a JTAC controller on the ground, something that would not be possible in a single pilot cockpit. The Strike Eagle makes use of one of the best actively electronically scanned array or AESA radars in service. The F-15E's AN-APG-82 AESA radar represents a continuous evolution of the F-15 sensor suite, providing unprecedented situational awareness, jamming capabilities, and range. The F-15's large size is actually an asset here, allowing it to fit a much larger and more potent radar sensor package that would not be possible to fit in smaller fighters. Additionally, the Strike Eagle makes use of a built-in satellite radio, allowing it to communicate over the horizon to critical nodes or assets. Keep in mind, everything mentioned so far has been about the existing F-15E Strike Eagle. Now, let's get into what makes the EX version so special and why it's a win-win for the USAF. The F-15E Strike Eagle has been in continuous service and production since 1988, and there have actually been several iterations over the years, each gaining some combination of updated software, avionics, engines, and other enhancements. These developments, along with the recent Saudi Arabia F-15SA and Qatar F-15QA variants of the F-15 Strike Eagle, have actually paid for the development costs for the United States Air Force, providing a huge win for cost savings. The most obvious feature of the new F-15 EX is the increased number of weapon stations, which can allow the EX to carry up to 22 missiles. Where previous versions of the Strike Eagle made use of analog hydromechanical flight control systems, the EX's new fly-by-wire system allows the jet to maximize its performance while not allowing over-G or an overstress of the airframe. This, in turn, has allowed the addition of two new outboard wing stations. Along with this, the all-new digital system includes additional weapon data buses, which provide an increase of six hardpoints for smart weapons. These new digital upgrades are managed by the ADC-P2 mission computer, arguably the world's fastest, which is capable of performing 87 billion instructions per second. The weapon options for the EX are truly impressive. Loadouts can include, for air-to-air -air missions, AIM-9 Sidewinders, AIM-120 AMRAMs, and eventually the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, or JATM. For air-to-ground missions, conventional freefall bombs, smart bombs, air-to-ground missiles, targeting pods, and of course, the use of external fuel tanks. Essentially, if there's an airborne weapon in the USAF arsenal, the F-15EX can probably carry it. Defensively, the F-15EX makes use of the latest version of the Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System, or EPOS, which is unsurpassed in its exploitation of the electromagnetic spectrum. EPOS is an all-in-one suite providing radar warning, geolocation, situational awareness, and self-protection, allowing the F-15EX to operate and survive in highly contested environments. Since EPOS is all digital, a smaller footprint is required, allowing the F-15EX to carry 50% more flares and chaff as compared to previous versions of the Strike Eagle. EPOS is a major update that provides the pilot WSO team vastly improved assessment of the battle space and allows for deeper penetration of modern integrated air defense systems. Additionally, the F-15EX makes use of an upgraded user interface and cockpit display 
Details are somewhat classified, but early reports indicate that the new displays rival those found in 5th generation fighters. Powering the F-15EX are the General Electric F-110 GE-129 engines. The F-110 series is a proven engine, having been equipped on the aforementioned F-15SA as well as on the most advanced versions of the F-16, with over 10 million accumulated flight hours. Each F-110 can provide up to 29,000 pounds of thrust, has no throttle restrictions, and can deliver up to 750 hours of flight time before needing major maintenance. Additionally, the F-110s are more efficient than the Pratt & Whitney PW220 engines that currently equip about half of the existing F-15E fleet. The announcement that the Air Force would be acquiring the F-15EX came as a surprise to some. The decision is directly related to the Air Force capping its F-35 orders to just over 1,000 units, instead of the initial 1,700 plus number it had previously targeted, making room for the F-15EX. Essentially, the Air Force has decided that instead of an all-stealth fleet of F-22s and F-35s, the Air Force will now be adding new non-stealth jets as well. So why the F-15EX? You can say there are two main factors. First, the Air Force's current F-15Cs have an average age of 35 years along with over 8400 hours of use, and as such are nearing the end of their operational service life. Keeping the existing F-15Cs flying would require expensive re-winging and only be a temporary solution to an ongoing problem. Secondly, the F-15EX's 7,500 pound capacity centerline weapon station gives the Air Force the ability to air deploy a hypersonic rocket boosted glide vehicle such as the X-60. Being able to deploy a hypersonic vehicle gives the F-15EX weapon options not available to the F-35 and does not require the use of stealth to deploy. It also doesn't hurt that the F-15EX would make use of the Air Force's existing F-15 infrastructure and training pipelines, providing an additional cost savings and reduction in time to bring the F-15EX online. Speaking of costs, the F-15EX is expected to have a flyaway cost of $80 million, closely matching that of the ever-lowering unit costs of the F-35. The biggest cost savings, however, will be in the cost per flight hour. Currently, the F-35 costs about $43,000 per flight hour to operate, while the F-15EX is projected to cost around $27,000 per flight hour. There is absolutely a need for an all-stealth fifth-generation fighter like the F-35, but for less contested airspace or lower intensity operations, the more cost-effective F-15EX is a better option. For now, the Air Force has placed an order to procure the first eight F-15EXs with plans to order a total of 144 with a $22.89 billion contract. Additionally, the Air Force has also awarded GE a contract for $101.4 million to obtain the GE F-110-129 engines used in the F-15EX. The 144 F-15EXs will be used to replace the existing high-time F-15Cs and Ds currently being flown by the National Guard. At first, that seems counterproductive, but when you consider the National Guard's mission to defend the homeland where stealth is not a priority, it makes more sense. Still, Guard units can and often do get deployed overseas, so even this initial batch of EXs could see some action. And as far as the Air Force's existing F-15Es, it would also make sense to replace these with EXs as the older E models age out. But as of the making of this video, that is still under review. Although the F-15EX makes use of bleeding edge avionics and enhancements, at the end of the day it is still a fourth generation airframe, meaning its radar cross section or RCS is still large compared to fifth generation stealth fighters. However, the F-15EX is not envisioned as a day one deep penetration strike aircraft operating on its own. Instead, fifth generation F-22s and F-35s fulfill that role. One possible use of the F-15EX would be to have F-22s and F-35s conduct initial strikes to neutralize advanced air defenses and then have the F-15EXs provide follow-up strikes. Another possible application would be to use an F-35 as a target designator staying ahead of the F-15EX elements. In this way, the F-35 could target enemy aircraft undetected and allow the F-15EXs to launch volleys of medium to long-range missiles at the incoming fighters. 
The F-15 EX's large fuel capacity and on-station time also make it an excellent choice for defensive combat air patrols or as an always-ready reaction force that can be in the air for extended periods of time. By purchasing the F-15 EX, the Air Force has shown a commitment to retaining a high-low mix of 5th and 4th generation fighters. However, that is not to say that the Air Force isn't already looking forward to the 6th generation of fighter aircraft. In fact, the Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance or NGAD program is already underway for this exact purpose. Reports have surfaced that in September a flight demonstrator has already been flying in secret and a next generation fighter engine is scheduled to be completed by 2025. Still, there is a growing need for a multi-role fighter that can perform a wide range of missions and help close the air dominance fighter gap. The F-15EX meets these needs and more. What do you think? Does the F-15EX represent a great leap forward for the Eagle? Should the Air Force operate a mix of F-22s, F-35, and F-15EXs? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Stay safe and see you next time.